and welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube for the return of Selesnya Knights, one of our favorite decks to play this format. Hey, what's up, Borderland Ranger? Thanks for that, Risa. Borderland Ranger was the first person that put this deck together. Yeah, so thank you so much for that resub there. Um, and yeah, congrats on the new job. For sure. All right, but anyway, yeah, so we're playing some Selesnya Knights. As you can see here, I've changed up a couple of things since the last time that we played it. Um, you know, we had that the one of um, Sir Farron here, and I'm going to be trying Bond of Flourishing instead, help us hit our land drops um, and everything there with the extra with the uh, extra Bond of Flourishing. Also want to try... I uh, want to play two Cavalier of Dawn. I'm going to take out the Tulsimer. It doesn't seem like there's like Tulsimer is as good. There's not as many small creatures, but there's more artifacts and enchantments and things that we really want to kill with Cavalier of Dawn. So got a second one of those in the main. Um, so that's those are the only uh, main deck changes. Sideboard, as you can tell, I changed up a few things. We got two more Brontodons. So we have a lot of ways to kill artifacts and enchantments with the four Knight of Autumns in the main, the Cavalier of Dawns, two more Brontodons. So we got that um, for all these fires and food decks. We got you know another Cavalier over there, which we we had that before. We, we had one and one. Now we're gonna have two and one. And then also I'm gonna try I'm gonna try this the Wanderer. So basically the point of the Wanderer here is it's really good against Jeskai fires where we can, uh, and that's what it's going to mostly be for, where we can exile their large creatures. Hopefully we can be taking down their Fires of Inventions with all of our artifact and enchantment removal so they don't get to give their creatures haste. And, you know, our Wanderer can just exile any of them with a minus two. But then also the first part is really valuable there because a card that's going to be really good against us is Deafening Clarion. And we can prevent the damage that Deafening Clarion would be doing to us and all of our creatures and our worthy knights and all the tokens and everything with the Wanderer. So that's why I'm going to try out the Wanderer is to, you know, not only fight against Deafening Clarion that would kill all these things, but then also be able to exile large creatures as well. We can also play this against like Mono Red uh, to to uh, protect ourselves from burn spells and things like that. But so that that's a pretty interesting one to try. But all right, this is our. Um, you know, this is just an, another Great Henge deck where we have the Acclaimed Contenders and go find the Great Henge, and we want to just um, spew out a whole lot of creatures, go really wide, make our creatures larger with Circle of Loyalty and Tristani, um, and win like that. So that's that's kind of our goal. So let's see how we do. We're gonna we're gonna be playing four matches in Mythic here with this deck. I got some more work to do tonight to get ready for the stream tomorrow. So we're just gonna be doing four matches. Um, does the cat say it does one damage and then, yeah, so does it, does it keep the cat from pinging you? The thing is, I don't, I don't think we'd bring it in in that matchup unless they were playing really big creatures also. Yeah, so the cat's not lose life, it's damage. So then, yeah, it would prevent it would prevent the damage from the cat then. Opponent. Okay, what happened to our opponent?
Um, do I just keep a whole bunch of questing beasts? Uh, I guess so. I don't. I don't like. I, I don't even know if they're they're there. Doesn't seem like they're there. Okay, so you play around Wander on the board. It's great against Gruel, decent against Fires. It blanks their Clarions. Yeah, yeah, and and like the Fires decks also are just playing all those huge creatures, and so yeah, great against Gruel also. So yeah, Wander seems like it could be a pretty decent sideboard card because our sideboard's not amazing anyway in these these two colors, especially with Veil of Summer gone, and green and white, or maybe the the two worst sideboard colors. Thanks, VT Log. Yeah, I was just kind of going through, you know, going through all the green and white cards and looking for something else for for like the Fires of Invention matchup, and that's what I came up with. But yeah, hopefully it works out well. All right, so obviously this does not count towards one of our four matches. Obviously, so we'll still play four matches. Hawkeye likes headbutting the mic. That's how you broke the mic cord before. It's not the fastest hand, but it's kind of hard to mulligan good mana, four lands, three spells. We're on the play, so it's okay to be a little slower. Ugh, not the best draw. If I just play Knight of Autumn as a 4-3, then the Great Henge will cost 5 mana. It would be more convenient to cost... To cost 4 mana to be able to play before Tristani. Reason Reef. All right, we need to draw land here so we can play the Great Henge. All right, Hawkeye, you going to help us draw land? <laughs> no. The worst land. Blow up this food token. <laughs> I mean, it, it's an all right henge. I don't know about great. So I do have to be worried about my opponent using Agent of Treachery to steal my Great Henge. I wouldn't mind them playing Mass Manipulation. That would be good for me. I don't want Agent of Treachery steal the Great Henge, but Mass Manipulation steal the creatures, that would be fine. Uh, that was the card I do not... Out of any card that they could possibly have, that was the 
worst one for me. That's for sure the worst one for me. Because obviously that's just going to give them a lot of life and card advantage and everything too now. Something I don't want them to have access to. The reason why mass manipulation wouldn't be that bad because of Tristani. Tristani doesn't... It only gets you creatures though. It's not just all permanents. Hmm. That's four lands in a row. Well darn. I need that fifth land and we drew that. Bond of Flourishing. And since then, it's just been lands. And I don't need lands anymore. Who knows? I don't know. Maybe we can mill them out? Probably not. Maybe. Not over. We can have some pretty amazing turns too with with us having the Great Henge. We draw like a claimed contender. No, we'll just draw more lands. Yeah, Agent of Treachery is a tough one for us, for sure. This would exile Cavalier of Thorns. We could play Tulsmer to kill. Exile and Cavalier of Thorn sounds pretty good. Tulsmore killing Resin Reef. Hey, live. I'm doing good. Doing good. Hmm. But well, Exile's Hydro Crisis too. All right, we'll play those. So like Conclave Tribunal's good at taking. It's good at taking like the card that they steal, with Agent of Treachery. You know, if like if they steal my Great Henge, I could Conclave Tribunal to take it and then blow up the Conclave Tribunal. What else to take out though? I guess it won Conclave Cavalier and this Bond of Flourishing. I, yeah, I guess I guess like Krasis also, you know, like so the Wanderer can exile Krasis or Conclave tri, uh, Tribunal is good at exiling Krasis. Okay.
All right, Mozar, take care. Oh, hey, Janosh. Uh, with the Abzan Knights? Um, yeah, it's it's tough to say. I mean, I like I like the Selesnya version that we're playing right now, and I like, um, and I like Orzov as well. And Abzan has kind of like the best of both of them, so it's it's kind of hard to say with like which one's like the best um, necessarily. But yeah, I think there's a lot of potential in in all of the in all three of the versions of Knights. And of course, Rakdos, Rakdos Knights is a pretty good Knights deck as well. So yeah, Throne of Eldraine really got a lot of very good at night stuff. I've been basically really enjoying any of the Acclaimed Contender Knights decks the most. Really like Acclaimed Contender. So, I, yeah, I went with that line to slow my opponent down. You know, Questing Beast would have attacked for four, and then the next turn attacked for four again. So, eight total damage. By doing that line, I put three power into play with the Worthy Knight and the extra 1-1. One, one. And so then the next turn with those those three power plus the Questing Beast, I attacked for seven. So I attacked for one less point of damage by doing that. But I also got to slow them down. I got to take away a blocker. Um, with the O3, so we actually got to do another two points of damage there by taking away the, that O3 blocker and also slowed them down from ramping. So yeah, we, we attacked for one less damage, but we got we got a blocker out of the way, so we, we technically did more damage, and we slowed him down. Both of those. Hmm. Tulsmer does a good job of killing all those mana creatures, though. Alright, I'm going to play a Tulsmer over a Questing Beast. Hey. <laughs> Yeah, that, that is unfortunate that you do need the other knight in play for a claimed contender. Um, but it, it may be too strong if you didn't need that extra knight. So for uh, for this matchup, Wanderer is going to be exiling Hydroid Krasis, Cavalier of Thorns. Um, we just saw them play a Questing Beast, so Questing Beast as well. Darn another Risen Reef. 
That was a good turn for the opponent. Alright, so I think I'm going to play Tristani first before Wanderer. Try to help get some more protection for the Wanderer. Plus, they may play a large Hydroid Krasis where I really need to exile Krasis also. <laughs> yeah, my opponent's going Tristani and Agent Treachery. Um, you don't need to... You know, you don't need to steal creatures, though, with Agent Treachery. Agent Treachery is brutal. Ravapa, getting that two month club. Welcome to the two month club, Ravapa. I don't really have good options here. I'm, I'm basically allowing them to have the Wanderer exile. And that got us to the 20 subs, getting us another sub goal. Basically allowing them to exile that, because if I play the Circle of Loyalty first, then, then they could exile these Worthy Knights. Um, I could play the Knight of Autumn and give it two counters and see if they exile that. Hey, Janosh! Using your Twitch Prime sub over here. Thank you so much. Nah, I want to block that. That's going to get some more hypes. If my computer lets me do it. There we go.
Alright, 21. So this is the problem. They could just have more agent of treacheries. Which seems pretty likely. Hopefully not. But that is a card that my deck is not too good against. Through this land, we are all connected. Behold, nature's true power. I don't really know what we're supposed to be doing against Agent of Treachery. I mean, Hushbringer is not the answer. Hushbringer shuts off so much stuff from our deck. But yeah, that's that's a deck that's starting to get popular now, but hasn't been popular in a while. It's, if that deck does get popular, that's that's really rough for us. <laughs> yeah, Ag Agent of Treachery, Mass Manipulation, those cards are really lame. I wish Tristani just actually worked. You know, like if, if Tristani actually... You know, took you know that had all the permanents. That'd be nice. Can I keep this? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, sixteen. Sixteen white sources, four paradise druids. That's twenty. The flower flourish twenty one. The bond of flourishing twenty two. We have like twenty two good draws. And it's not like we need it immediately. Yeah, I wish Tristani just returned all permanents. Well, you can't... If you were, if you steal Tristani, Tristani just goes back to you. You can't steal Tristani. Why not Hushbringer? Because Hushbringer shuts down the Great Henge, which is my way to go way over the top. It shuts down Acclaimed Contender. It shuts down Knight of Autumn. It shuts down... Um, uh, Tristani. Tristani's ETB effect. <clears throat> Alright, so 22 good draws so far. We're 0 for 3, and we got finally got there. Um, I have too many cards that I want to play here. I feel like I should use my white mana while I can. <laughs> Every time I want to play Hushbringer, I scan my deck and go, oh, never mind. Yeah, it's it's tough in white. Like white that's like there's not a whole lot of like great white cards, but there's not there's definitely not very many that work real well with Hushbringer. Like Oketra Oketra does. I think like I had a, some kind of Hushbringer Oketra deck. Oh yeah, my, my Cavalier of Dawns, those get shut down by Hushbringer also. Need more white mana. All right, kept a risky one. Didn't work out. At least my opponent doesn't really know anything about my deck now. And we got a lot of sideboard stuff here. This should hopefully be a pretty good matchup for us. All right, so we're going to take out Circle of Loyalties, kind of take out some of our top ends. Like, we don't really need Circle of Loyalty as much. Maybe one Tristani, Cavalier of Dawn. Um, we'll 
take out the bond of flourishing. I don't want to like take out too many knights, which is really the thing we have to watch out for because of acclaimed contender and worthy knight. Maybe I just take out Paradise Druid. With us bringing in all these other cheap spells. We'll see how that does. All right, got the opposite problem now. I'll just play the bigger creature here. I'll just kind of wait to see if we can get... Uh, cancel. Get some value out of Worthy Knights. Yeah, they're going Rakdos fires. We need our lands. There's three copies of the Greyhenge. I mean, all we'd need is one land and we'd be able to play it. But our deck is determined not to draw lands this match. Yeah, we'll see what the blue's for, not exactly sure. Pretty surprised they didn't bedevil the Great Henge, to be honest. Hmm. 
Yeah, not really sure why they didn't bedevil the Greyhenge. Says two six for the Esper deck. No, we uh, we were two and three. For the Esper deck. I want to play this Bond of Flourishing again. But I don't really want to take out any of these cards. Maybe Cavalier of Dawn. I don't really want to take out a Great Henge, even though it you know didn't look great. I mean, well, it looked great once we started being able to cast it. Am I supposed to take out Tristani? I'm going to take out the Cavalier Dawn. I, th I really think the Greyhenge is just too powerful. It's just too good of a card to cut too many copies of. It's it's really going to be our way that we win. We pull ahead. You know, like the gain two life a turn and drawing lots of cards. It's just so good. I thought about shocking in and playing Brontodon, so if like they have removal, they would use it on Brontodon, not Worthy Knight. They probably have a bunch of five drops in their hand, the five drop Cavaliers. bunch of lands and one five drop cavalier If I play the Great Henge, then they get to draw an extra card with Witch's Oven. Right now, they get to draw one. If I play the Great Henge, they get to draw two. Otherwise, I can just play Brontodon, then they only draw one card. I'll play the Great Henge.
They get to draw one extra card, but, you know, we get to draw an extra card also now. And we get to ramp and have a lot better turn next turn. That's kind of rough. Well, that was not correct. Darn. That is the correct card to kill. All right, well, we need to draw another knight to be able to trigger, to be able to have a claim contender trigger. That's not a knight. We need a knight. That's not a knight either. This isn't gonna trigger. We'll just trigger the Great Henge, I guess. That's not a knight either. Bleh. There's a bunch of lands. That was just a terrible turn for me. Yeah, this, this went horribly. I, I felt really good about winning this game a little while ago. This all went as bad as it could. That that Mayhem Devil was awesome. Killing my knights. And then three lands that we drew. That gives them four triggers to kill the acclaimed contender. And I can only I can chump block a cavalier, but then I'm I'm dead. Man, I did not think I was gonna be losing that. That was a disappointing one. Alright, honestly, after winning game one, I, I really didn't think there was any way we were losing that match. Whenever we got to sideboard and put in, you know, all those devout decrees and, and everything, but we you know, we just don't don't draw devout decrees. Draw too many lands, and even that, yeah, I just did not think we were losing that at all. That's why we play the games, though. Anything can happen. The point with, the point with Fires is that Fires is pretty broken with Cavalier of Flame. Like, those two are just an, an amazing combination. Yeah, I don't know what they're using the blue mana for. Could be counter magic out of the sideboard. Like, it could have just been like a sideboard counter magic thing for the blue. Which, that doesn't make a lot of sense with Fires of Invention now that I think of it. Could have been Royal Scions. Royal Scions would make sense. Give Cavalier a Flame Trample. loot away a cat, and then be able to just play the cat for free off of a food token. I wouldn't keep this on the draw. We'll try it on the play, though. 
My deck also only has 24 land, so us flooding out those last two games was pretty unfortunate. Because, yeah, this is only a 24 land deck. Yeah, you can sideboard in lands. Yep, you can have lands as part of your 15 card sideboard. And bring them in. Um, it doesn't happen too often, but it's definitely a possibility. All right, so the Teamer Adventure deck again. Um, this one's kind of all going to be about if they have Lucky Clover, Beanstalk Giant, if they have that combo to get lots and lots of mana. Does not look like they do. Yeah, I mean, just... We have, like, a lot of different green and white uh, requirements, so we just have some Blossoming Sands. Um, you know, it's you get to gain a life with it, but it just helps out your green and white colors. Like, there's not there's not a green-white scry land, so we don't want to just only play four Temple Gardens. We want other dual lands besides that. Yeah, Team of Adventures is a thing. You can have any lands in your sideboard. You can have basic lands in your sideboard, too. It's not just non-basic. This is another thing that destroys Lucky Clover, but it's very expensive. But they play the Great Henge also. This destroys Great Henge. This kills their 1-mana one 1-1. One, one. It's, it's pretty annoying playing a 5-mana card to kill a 1-1, one, one, but it's a powerful 1-1. One, one. And just play Glass Caskets to get rid of their 5-5s five and everything too. But Glass Caskets get bounced by Borrower. Borrower can certainly be annoying. You know, like, we take a turn off to play the Great Henge and they bounce it with Borrower. It can definitely be annoying. Gideon's for control. Uh, basically, decks with sweepers. Give us a, a different angle of attack against sweepers. Like your Kai's Wrath decks, your Time Wipe decks. It's annoying at two, these two tap lands. If I was on the play, I would definitely mulligan. Uh, I'm still just going to mulligan. Alright, this is better. I would like to draw Knight of Autumn and be able to blow up Once Upon a Time. Or, well, it's not Once Upon a Time. Whatever. Lucky Clover. Be able to blow up Lucky Clover. <laughs> that card. Because basically the games that they play Lucky Clover and then they play Fertile Footsteps, those are the really hard cards to win. Or those are the really hard games to win. So I hope they don't have Fertile Footsteps here. 
Please, no fertile footsteps. Just do something else. Play a three mana five five. It's weird that you that you don't mind them drawing playing a three mana five five that draws a card. Ugh, I have fertile footsteps. GG. It's just too much value being able to ramp that fast. And of course they come into play untapped, because that's fair. But that's that's the dream scenario. Turn two clover, turn three fertile foot. Fertile footsteps. They just had the one clover I'd consider tribunaling it, but it's kind of too late now, also. Yeah, it's just game now. We'll be on we'll be on the play for game three where we'll be able to have Knight of Autumn be able to destroy Lucky Clover on the play. I do need to play the Brontodons. Uh this tie. Um this one was from Espresso Box a long a long time ago. Um, this is the company. Oh, it's actually just Brezza is the company. But yeah, it's it's red, white, and it's actually kind of like yellowish, like red, white, and yellow. Or not, not white, sorry, red, blue, and yellow. Sorry. Or a mystical dispute. You're late, Night of Autumn. You're late. The reason to play Brontodon is because of the Great Henge. I'm Chandra, the That's the reason to play the Brontodon instead of Disenchant. The Disenchant is more mana effective, but Brontodon also just blocks pretty well against the aggro decks like you know your red like the red black sacrifice Your're that we just played against. The best way to destroy things. I mean, just look at our, our... We have three lands over here. They have 30 lands over there. That's just not... Not going to work out for us. Um, I use the full Windsor knot. That's what, that's the knot that I use for tying my ties. It's my favorite knot. They just gained 16 life. Nothing else. Well, that's fine. All right, so getting rid of the Edgewall Innkeeper so they play like Beanstalk Giant, they don't get to draw cards. That was a good draw.
yeah, I like bow ties and bolo ties. I don't really have. I think I have. I have one bolo tie. I don't have a bow tie, but I my preference is just the skinny tie. That's that's what I like the most. But um, I support any kind of good fashionable neckwear. Well, at least we're keeping them from drawing a bunch of cards because we killed the Edgewall Innkeeper with these other adventure creatures. Now we need to start hitting our knights. All right, that's got to be game. They got to go. They're gonna go grab Return to Nature. Which I guess maybe they destroy the Great Henge and not Conclave Tribunal, even though I'd expect them to draw, destroy Conclave Tribunal. You can see why having Clover into Fertile Footsteps is so important. No, I have not seen any Metallic Ties. <laughs> no, I, I do not own any hoodies. That's not, not an article of clothing that I'm a big fan of. Never owned a hoodie. It's just not that likely that they have a ton of Lucky Clovers that I need to bring in a lot more artifact removal, but it's just such an important card, though. It's a tough choice. <laughs> yeah, never. No. Yeah, I have... My, my loungewear is just, like, long sleeve tee and... Pajama pants. That'd be my lounge loungewear. But no, not not a single one. Best case scenario is we draw a knight, we'll get a basic out of our deck immediately instead of just playing the Temple Garden. Gotta thin that deck, you know, 153rd. See, a little less than 2%. But best case scenario is we draw a knight before we play these acclaimed contenders. Especially Knight of Autumn would be a good one if they have Lucky Clover. That was a pretty worthy draw step, though. We'll take that. No! Ugh. Crushed. Maybe we draw another one here. We can go Worthy Knight plus Acclaimed Contender. That would be the best. Obviously, we want to take that Innkeeper before they draw a lot more cards. We can hopefully handle all these cards that they got.
No, I don't anymore, Viper. No, just... Just focus on streaming. The best draw. I mean, these are all pretty good, but we just take the Acclaim Contender. So it can just replace itself. <clears throat> we can just go infinite with them. All right, really want to draw a land so I can go Great Henge plus Contender this next turn. This is looking good for us. Let's go, contenders. Let's try the card first. This is kind of the point of our deck. Start going real wide. With the help of Worthy Knight, then Circle of Loyalty. Don't be Fae of Wishes, don't be Fae of Wishes. Hey LeBeau, happy Thanksgiving. Looks like Brazen Borrower. All right, that's not as bad as Fave Wishes. It's, it's annoying, but it's just a little setback. It's not. It's not the worst. Move over. Be fine as long as they don't draw a sweeper. More worthy knights. turn yeah we're good uh no i'm not playing a board wipe i'm running into a board wipe sure 
But each card gets me like so much stuff. Like Knight of Autumn just drew me a card and it was three mana for a five four and two three threes. Okay, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and they take 18, 21, 22, 23. Yeah, I decided to do the math. I was I was planning on waiting one more turn because all these other creatures, but I did the math and they're taking twenty three, so I guess I should just attack. No, no unbreakable formation in the list. It's around a million damage. With optimal blocks, they take twenty three. Unless I did the math wrong. Which we could have made it more if I didn't tap the 5 4 for mana. That's them taking 24 damage. Okay, victory! All right, one more match. Let's get that 2-2. Two -two. Let's, let's even this up. <laughs> the sound of seagulls gives me so the wreckage flashbacks now. Mulligan. Hmm. Striker Bow with the tier one sub. Thank you, Striker Bow. Okay, so Rakdos. We get our get our revenge time against Rakdos. Where we lost last time. What's the deck you've encountered the most in Historic? I'm not sure. I'd say the biggest, like, I've seen a lot of Kethis combo. I'd probably say the biggest decks are... Hmm. I'm going to play this. I'm a little scared of Mayhem Devil, honestly, next turn. And by... Like that that's about like tapping the Paradise Druid. That's what I mean. I'm scared of Pat I'm kinda of scared of tapping the Paradise Druid. Since I don't have two green, because I I kept I greedily kept the Castle Arden Veil instead of the second green source. Anyway, yeah, Kethis combo, um Field of the Dead, Nexus, Esper Control, Mono Red. Mono Red's really big. I'd I'd say the like those are kinda of like the big decks. The the two I've probably played against the most are Kethis and Mono Red.
Hey, Scotty. Yeah, doing good. Hey, vocal text. Or wait, well, let's see. Vok to Lex. There we go. That's better. Vog to Lex. One card left. I'd like to draw another green source. Oh, Midnight Reaper is awesome. Yeah, Hero went pretty good. Um, basically, we beat like, two aggressively slanted decks and lost. Darn. I was hoping they were going to keep on not attacking with Judith. But my mana situation, I just can't attack with the Paradise Druid. Mm, that's the reason to play the Con Conclave Cavalier. <clears throat> and we lost to three decks that were just going they were just going way over the top. Alright. Well we got super punished for keeping the Castle Art and Veil that whole time. But it definitely played differently if we if I didn't keep the Castle Art and Veil. I got real punished there. But hopefully with all this cyborg stuff, maybe we'll draw it this time. And we'll do well. Got to worry about Priest of Forgotten Gods. Hmm. Not sure about Brontodon. Brontodon, of course, gets stolen. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not gonna have room for Brontodon. We're gonna take out a Tristani. Hmm. Nice, you went 26 and 10 with the Gruul Historic deck. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think, yeah, right now, yeah, I think Historic's pretty healthy right now. It's, it's def it's just a lot more powerful than, than Standard. So, you know, if you kind of imagine that it's going to be like Standard, um, you know, like all that stuff that was banned in Standard is legal. And so there's just a lot of really good things to be doing in Historic. Do I have a favorite deck in standard? Um, maybe not right now. That's a good draw. You been playing Jun Dinos in Historic? There you go, that's a good one. Yeah, like there's a, there's a lot of different cards and different decks that I like. I'm not sure if I have a favorite. Maybe the Gruul Henge that we played yesterday. That could be my current favorite deck. You know, favorite decks for me kind of change all the time. Probably the Gruul Henge that we played yesterday. Yeah, I'd, I'd say that for my favorite currently. 
Yeah, I do need to give Orzov value another shot. That's a good one. That hurts, but I think we're supposed to discard the Greyhenge. Gosh, I wish I would have had either of these lands to discard instead. All right, well, this was just really bad by me. I definitely should have just Fabled Passage first and then done that. That was just really bad. I just wasted that Scry. Yeah, that was just a waste of a Scry. Awesome, European man. You played the Gruel Hand yesterday on ladder, had great success. Cool. Very good. Just got the one card left. If I didn't discard Great Henge, the other card I could have discarded was the Acclaimed Contender. It's basically between those two. So, of course, Conclave Cavalier makes two um, Elf Knights. So, they are Knights still for Acclaimed Contender. So, it's good. That was a good draw. I mean, it's just a... Um, just removal spell, two damage, I suppose. No one expects Ravager Room. I know, right? They killed that, and not my Cavalier of Dawn. I guess they don't want to kill Cavalier of Dawn. Because if they do, I get my Great Henge back. So obviously Knight of Autumn can kill Cavalier of Dawn, and that's it's kind of a problematic card. Oh yeah, sorry, sorry, logic, grep logic. Sorry about your rough day, rough ranking day. So do get to just attack pretty freely with these Cavalier of Dawns, because if if one of them dies, then we get back the Great Henge. I didn't destroy their oven before because I didn't want to give them a 3-3 with the first Cavalier. Because we had, like, the two creatures. They had, you know, not too much going on. But, 
Yeah, maybe that was the wrong decision. It's certainly possible. I did think about taking the Witch's Oven right there instead of the Mayhem Devil. I wasn't sure exactly which one that I was supposed to be taking. With the Tribunal. If I knew their, la their next draw step was called and familiar, I would have taken Oven. So it looks like I chose wrong. Wow. Chose very wrong. That's a good draw. I could take a claimed contender and try to have a claimed contender hit. Night of Autumn, that would be really greedy. Yep, killing the oven with the first Cavalier. Yep, that. Yep, looking back at it, that's what I really should have done. Yep, th giving them the 3 3 at that point wasn't that big of a deal. Um, I, that was too greedy. On my part, I was I was kind of thinking that I didn't want to like let them kill my you know have like a bunch of good blockers for the Cavalier, but that's honestly not even a problem because I had the backup and the Great Henge. So yeah, if I would, you know, magic's about learning, and if, if I would go back and kind of play this again, I, that's what I would have done with that first Cavalier was kill the Witch's Oven. I agree, that was the right thing to do. But it looks like it is probably going to work out for us. All right, so game three. All right, let's give it a try. All right, got to get this to even it up. Should be a good game. First two were pretty good. All right, market. Have a good one. I'll see you later. All right, good hand. We actually have devout decrees. How about that? Hmm. Devout Decree doesn't look so great with Witch's Oven here, though. We need to draw a Knight of Autumn. Hey, Kittles. So 
So I'm leading with the forest here for a specific reason. So like next turn, like they play a three drop, like a Judith or a Mayhem Devil, anything like that. I try to, to glass casket it. They sack their creature to Witch's Oven, and then I untap and, or then I play a new land and Devout Decree, the Cauldron Familiar. And... That's my plan here. All right, well, I'll just about to create this thing. <laughs> Brought over by the YouTube content. Well, well, yeah, welcome, Kittles. Things falling apart. <laughs> no such thing as too much. Oh, this is gonna be a close game. We'll see like how much like interaction they have for my five drops and everything. Ooh, wrinkle is tough. This is going to be a close one. I, mean, I got to kill the wrinkle with this. I also need to kill the witches of them with my cavalier. I just kind of don't have enough mana for everything right now. Need to get the Grey Henshin in play so we start gaining two life a turn. Counteract this Kit Kat. They sacrificed. They sacrificed. The cat is gone. Yeah, I mean, I. Th there's a lot of people that are really annoyed by Cauldron Familiar Witches of, and I'm not really one of them. That was a big storm thing there. I like cats. I do wish that they made the whole sacrifice the food thing. I, I, I wish that they would just do a patch and make it so you can just have it auto sack food. Um, I wish it just auto sack food all the time. Even even though it's like, you know, like basically like auto tap, you know, have it auto sack food. You know, you can see what you're going to be sacrificing, but just let it do it. I know there's different kinds of foods because of like the the gingerbread creature that's a food. And of course, the the two mana food. Yeah, yep. That's the only reason why people don't like it is because it takes a while. It's like... 
It's like having to manually tap to cast your spells. It's just, it's, it's not necessary. See, it's even putting Hawkeye to sleep. See, he's back there, laying on the couch, curled up. Tedious, that's a good word. Tedious. And unnecessarily tedious. It doesn't seem like it'd be that hard to program, right? Like, if they had, if you only have just regular food tokens, then it auto sacks. That doesn't sound like the hardest thing to program. So it's either destroy their oven or get me another blocker. Do I need another like if I if I destroy their oven, they have five creatures, I have four. But they also of course have Judith that can do a lot of damage. Like if they have Basically, if I destroy Oven, and then they have removal spell for Tristani, am I dead? Gotta be worried about that. I hope, I'm hoping not. The other option, of course, to, to destroying Oven is destroying my Glass Casket to make a blocker on my side. All right, regular elf. Take care. Have a good one. So yeah, I wanted to get rid of that so they couldn't just sit back and draw a lot of cards with Midnight Reaper, you know, sacking creatures like that. Alright, so it looks like it was a good call. We're almost dying, almost dead. Good thing we got four power of lifelink here. And the Grey Hen should help us pull ahead. Don't think I need a Cavalier of Dawn yet. I don't know. Maybe I need to. Maybe I need to just kill the Midnight Reaper. I think Midnight Reaper is scarier than Judith. Their ability to draw a lot more cards. Oh no! Ugh, and I could have taken another Great Henge, but I put it on the bottom. With me gaining two life a turn, I wasn't as scared of Judith. We're so close to being dead. I basically grabbed the Knight of Autumn because I need to gain life. I was probably dead if they attacked out with the this thing too. I don't know. Am I still dead? So I take four. Take four, gain four. And 
Then I take two from Judith. I go down to one. I was definitely dead if they would have attacked with this other thing. Uh. Like, I can't really kill the cats because the cats come back. All right, maybe I did need to kill the Judith. I don't know. I needed them to not kill my Great Henge. That, that was the difference in this game. They killed the Great Henge. I, I should have grabbed the second Great Henge instead of grabbing that Worthy Knight. I messed up by not grabbing that second one to have a backup in case they killed it. Why am I not blocking the cats? Because the cats would... I mean, I guess they're going to do a damage to me for blocking them. Yeah, I mean, I'm just I'm just dead by them because they, they do one damage each for dying because of Judith, and then they, they can come back with the food and do another point of damage. Yeah, but they would need to sack the food, so I guess I guess I just needed to block them. I guess that was a mistake not to block them. Yeah, the cats just kill me. Ah, oh, that's frustrating. I just didn't grab that second Great Henge. If I would have just grabbed the second Great Henge, we would have been just fine. I did not protect against them destroying my Great Henge. Man, that's frustrating. We lost to Rakdos twice. I feel like Rakdos is a really good matchup for us, but it just doesn't all you know, you don't always win your good matchups. We lost to him twice, we're just too slow and So that's that's frustrating. Um certainly. Um anyway, I, I liked the I honestly liked the changes that we made to the deck. I think having the extra Bronzedons was pretty good. I liked having the Wanderers. Um, I don't like. I wouldn't mind playing more against Rakdos decks. I think that we're going to be just fine there overall. Like I, you know, I think that this could have easily been three one. Um, the the Agent of Treachery deck, you know, like that's just a huge problem. Like that's going to beat us. So I don't feel bad about losing that. But I feel bad at losing to the two Rakdos decks. Um, You know, that, that last game, if I grabbed the Great Henge, you know, that, that may have been it may have been a two and two if I would have just made one small decision different there. But I didn't. And we're one and three. Magic's close close games there with Magic. Alright, but Slesnia Knight, still a fun one to play. The Great Henge is just so good. That's just a, a fun card to play and everything. That's that's a really good card. Um yeah. All right, so uh, that's it, though, for Celestia Knight. So if you're watching on YouTube, please hit that like. Subscribe button's over there. Feel free to leave some comments. Let me know what you think about the updates to the deck. And, of course, I uh, hope you check out my Patreon page. It's just uh, it's patreon.com slash ToddStevensMTG. There's a link below. It's just $3 a month if you want to help support uh, my content for making all these YouTube videos. Um, that's about two and a half cents per YouTube video that I make with it just being $3 a month. Plus, I also um, write some articles over there, just do some some writing over there. Today, I wrote about uh, some, some standard stuff, called it um, A Song of Food and Fire. I thought that title was pretty good. Um, but yeah, so you can, you can see that uh, content over there too. So I hope you join our com community over at Patreon. But that's it here for Celestia Nights. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.